this session uh, is basically on bird identification process now uh, this is basically uh, the whole uh, uh, experience that i have uh, got from speaking to various people observing them in the field and also uh, studying how they identify a particular bird now there is no one particular scientific method which i have seen everybody has his own uh, particular uh, manner in which they identify the bird and i have seen some crazy uh, uh, explanations some people are given they have given the evil look in the eye of the bird means that this is that bird or a bonnie seagull for example will have a hunter's look now these are the kind of uh, things which people say but they have a process at arriving at that now this uh, uh, this uh, presentation will take you through a process which i follow and i found many of uh, my friends follow uh, this will help you arrive at uh, the particular genus uh, and also help you to identify the species but the whole idea of this uh, presentation is that if you arrive at a genus genus means for example a wobbler a within a wobbler a phylloscopus wobbler if you arrive at the wobbler that is the whole idea of uh, this presentation um, i would not promise you that you know you would be able to identify a um, uh, let's say uh, a phylloscopus wobbler by its species name uh, a lemon drum wobbler you will not be able to say that but you will be able to say that this is a wobbler and if you can do that after this presentation or going through it again and again uh, that would uh, be uh, the whole idea of uh, the result of this uh, whole session so uh, as we start this uh, all the classification of uh, living things uh, this will have slightly uh, uh, a bit of uh, zoology in it but i will try and make it as uh, simple as possible in terms of uh, simple english now all uh, living things are classified from uh, into various uh, classifications and as the classifications grow towards the left it is because of the specific features for example all animals all living things are in the kingdom animalia and the birds as this get specific to birds they come under aves and as it comes specific to bulbuls they come under pycnotus and if it comes to red uh, uh, red vented bulbul it is pycnotus caefer so like this as you go specific this is how the birds are classified or any living thing is classified now uh, we don't have to remember all this kingdom phylum class order family you don't have to remember all this what you have to remember basically is two things one is the genus and one is the species because if you take any uh, any living thing they are named uh, under a binomial classification the binomial classification has two names first name is genus second is species for example a red vented bulbul is called as pycnotus caefer the pycnotus is the genus name and caefer is the specific name now why should you know a, a, a binomial name why can't i call it red vented bulbul the problem is that you might call it red vented bulbul in india but in england they might call it something else in america they might call it some, something else so it is always good to know the binomial name because that is a common name across uh, any uh, 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 across the world any country and also in books if you want to check uh, in in places where you want to sort and find out what about the bird there if you go by the binomial name it is easier rather than the common name so this is the way all living things are classified and as the features of these living things get more and more specific they get into smaller groups so for example a passeri form uh, is an order uh, but this means that any bird that has two toes in the front and two toes in the uh, sorry three toes in the front and one toe in the back which means it can hold the perch like this so when it can hold the perch like this it is called passeri form and about 85% of all bird species uh, we find in the world are passeri forms now in the passeri form you further go specific species of let's say fruit eating birds or birds which are of particular feature they come under a family called pycnotidae now all orders end with mes all 
families will end with day d a e day pycorotti day and in pycorotti day there are various genus available there is white cheek bulbul there is uh, you know all bulbuls come under pycorotti day then there are white cheek bulbul there is jungle bulbul and uh, uh, the uh, uh, himalayan bulbul and all that so under that comes genus as you more go more specific it comes under pycorotus genus and then the finally the species name pycorotus kefir so that that is how you identify a bird right down to species now what we will do today is we will concentrate only on getting this part of the because we are talking about birds so we don't have to worry about this this part we have to worry only on this part so we will start how to get the order the family the genus the species in simple layman terms and to how to identify a particular bird so let's start with the first thing now if you see uh, the size of the bird is very simple uh, matrix to understand and this gives you the order of the bird it very easily tells you what order this bird belongs to and the size and the habitat in which the bird is found put together will give you the family the size the habitat the bill shape and the plumage and habits of the bird will give you the genus and then there then we get into specific features like face wings tails special id points uh, the shape of uh, uh, its uh, plumage uh, sorry its legs toes etc will give you the species so it is all in very simple terms we understand what is size we understand what is habitat we understand what is bill shape we understand what is uh, plumage we will try and understand the various parts of the bird and special id points this is the scientific part and this is what we talk in common terms so both of them are related and one thing you need to understand is that as you keep seeing this uh, birds regularly there will be birds which are uh, which for example you are very very used to for example uh, a maina uh, or like in india you would be very used to a crow now the moment i say i see a crow i i will not go through this whole step by step the whole thing will happen in milliseconds in my brain and this whole thing will happen in milliseconds and i will say it's a crow but if i see a wobbler then the first three steps perhaps order family and genus might happen in milliseconds but the species will take maybe a day or two if it is slightly more uh, complicated it i might only know the order and family the genus and species might take more time so it is not necessary that these things can happen within a fraction of a second or the identification can take more than a uh, few hours or few days also in some cases so uh, we will go through these uh, whole process one by one one important thing which i am not covering in this is uh, the call now there are birds which are Uh, the the sure shot way of identifying certain birds like pipits and warblers is by call now the reason why i am not uh, uh, doing calls here is because calls per se itself is a separate uh, topic to take so this is uh, where you will you are presented a photograph and how do you identify a bird with that photograph so let's start with the size now zeroing on the order so when you see a bird the general structure of a bird a uh, eagle for example is 60 cm on average and a warbler is 10 cm so obviously as soon as you see it you will be able to tell that it, one is a big bird one is a small bird you might not be able to tell it is a eagle or a warbler but definitely you will be able to tell it's a big bird versus a small bird now that is the first step to identify a bird a big bird versus a small bird now that's as simple as that as it goes on now there are two birds which are very similar in size a eagle is 70 cm and a buzzard is 60 cm now what do you do here then some buzzards are bigger than eagles for example upland buzzard is bigger than a fish eagle or a spotted eagle now what do you do there here you go a slightly into the strength of the structure uh, and then try and identify the bird so as far as structure is concerned if the bird has at least 50% size difference then you can make make out that they are two different birds so a bird with 50% difference you can call it as a big bird versus a small bird 
now that itself will help you identify what kind of order we are talking about and if there are two similar big birds then in the size itself the strength of the structure needs to look we looked at for example a big stern eagle has a very very strong beak was it was a buzzard the legs for example for all aquila eagles have feathered legs their legs are all covered with thick socks like feathers and uh, the the serpent eagles have all scaled legs their legs are all covered with scales because they are to protect them from the snake bites so like that you can easily find out the which type of eagle it is bases the strength of the structure itself now the order is very easy to shortlist this is the first step in identification of birds so for example technically speaking we will be able to identify acceptory forms versus passive forms we don't have to get technical here basically what it means is you are able to identify that this is a big bird a raptor or it's a small bird like wobbler babbler tits fly catchers etc it's a small bird versus a big bird that is what the first step in identifying any bird is might sound very simple might sound very basic but that's how we start then coming on to the family which is the habitat now there are birds which are found only in desert and scrub there are birds which are found in water there are birds which are found in forest there are birds which are found in grassland so there are there are birds which are very easily identifiable bases where they are found for example i'm sure we'll not make a uh, uh, identification mistake between a duck and a eagle we'll not make a difference uh, identification uh, difference between a, a flower pecker and uh, let's say a, a wader so that is because they are found in various other places they are different habitats plus also the size so size plus habitat will help you identify which family that bird belongs to for example in desert the coursers are found they are they are from a family called gladiolidae now we don't have to remember gladiolidae but coursers are found in desert the pelagic birds are found in water ducks are found in ponds shore birds are found in uh, uh, waders are found in the shores now the beauty about ducks for example in ducks itself there are two kinds of ducks one duck is called as a diving duck and one called duck is called the dabbling duck so the diving duck will completely submerge into the water it will go into the water it will dive in one place and come out from the another place whereas a dabbling duck will never go completely into the water it will have its legs up while it feeds inside the water and it will never completely submerge into the water that itself will give you the habit itself will give you the difference between two ducks so all dabbling ducks belong to anas so for example you will know a difference between a poacher and a dabbling duck only by the basis of whether it can dive into the water or it cannot dive into the water so a spot bill duck for example or a gadwal or a, or a uh shoveler they can never completely submerge into water whereas a poacher or a um, uh, uh, or a marble duck uh, or uh, even your dab chicks they can completely dive into the water and come out from some other place so you'll know that these are two different uh, bir birds and they are not the same though both of them are the same habit habitat but they have different habits so that also helps you identifying which family they belong to now there are times when within the same genus like within wobblers there will be difference in habitat and which will help you identify which genus and which species they belong to for example all brown wobblers so where people uh, get uh, really uh, not terrified when we say let's identify wobblers wobblers uh, are very easy to identify if you can identify which order they belong to it is very very easy believe me and how to identify order it is basically by color of wobbler if the wobbler is brown it is belonging to silvia and that is because it is in the desert or scrubland so it has to it has to be brown for camouflage so it is a silvia wobbler in shrubs or in forest you will find phylloscopus wobbler they are either green or yellow or a mixture of green and yellow and in grasslands you'll have wobblers with long legs which are 
mostly gray. They are called acrocephalus wobblers. So if you see a wobbler which is brown, you have about five to ten cilia wobblers which you can just go through and you can easily identify. The problem is there are about eighty-five wobblers in India, and when somebody sees a wobbler, he goes through all eighty-five. He doesn't have to go through all eighty-five. All he has to do is he just has to go. and look at the color of the wobbler and then go into the particular order and see if he does that then there are only 10 words he has to actually compare with and it is very easy to do that it is only that when people you know uh, get uh, don't have this idea of what they are looking for is when they get into trouble so basically if the habit will give you the order in which that particular word belongs to so for example we have the family shortlisted and after the family uh, the order shortlisted and after the order the family is also shortlisted so a coarser versus a leaf wobbler or within a leaf a wobbler a silvia wobbler versus a leaf wobbler so this is how the second step is completed the first step and the second step are pretty easy the first step is basically the size of the bird will tell you big bird or small bird the habitat of the bird and the habit of the bird will tell you which family it can belong to and basis this is the next step which is perhaps the most elaborate one is to find the genus and the species now as i said uh, if you can get up to the genus it's a job well done if you can do species uh, we are brilliant but species still takes many experts uh, especially for wobblers pipettes and uh, very um, uh, and the tits for example in some some cases and akila eagles when they are adult when they are adult akila eagles it is impossible to uh, to just say you know without look, looking seriously into features say that this is uh, this or that so it takes time but we'll attempt how to go through these so to start with the genus we'll start with uh, bill now bill of the bird is not actually its mouth the bill of the bird is the hand of the bird it does all the work which our human hand does we catch with our hand the birds catch with their bill we tear with their hands the birds tear with the bill we we you know we break things with the hands the birds break things with the bill we drum with the hands the birds drum with the bill so that's how the bill is for the birds it's not the hand uh, it's not the mouth it is the hand and the bill basically has three four parts the upper part of the bill is called maxilla and usually a good um, a good id person will always write it as upper mandible maxilla is a zoological term used only by scientists If somebody is writing upper mandible i would appreciate that the second is the nostril birds have nostrils and they are usually present on the bill and then the the gap is uh, uh is the uh, uh is the gap between the two bills upper bill and the lower bill the lower bill is called lower mandible and the gap line is like lips you can call them as lips of the bird which extend into the cheek of the bird so this is very important structure because bill is perhaps the easiest way a uh, short sure short way to identify certain in fact 90% of the birds you can identify basis bill how can you do that for example all seed eaters if you see what are the seed eaters there is lark is a seed eater sparrow is a seed eater bunting is a seed eater uh, then your uh, uh, bunting lark uh, then uh, your grosbeak is a seed eater all these if you see they have a very conical bill where it is curved on top and flat on bottom why is it because the seed has to be kept on the bottom and the top has to apply pressure to break that seed so as soon as you see this kind of a shape you can easily say it is a seed eater then comes the worm eaters worm eaters have conical bill what are the worm eaters you have wobblers tits fly catchers vtrs all these are worm eaters now the worm eaters are a very very conical bill thin conical bill why do they have thin conical bill because they have to actually prod into various uh, holes and you know services to crevices to take out uh, the worms out of the 
those uh, tiny places and that is where they have a very conical bill then you have the meat eaters now meat eaters have very very powerful beaks a uh, large uh, and a hook at the end the hook is there it's called the tooth it is used to rip the prey apart now these birds will rip the prey apart and eat not eat the bir uh, uh, the birds as a whole so they will rip it apart and eat so that is why they have a hook so you have eagles you have all the raptors like that you have shrikes like that some fly catchers also have a small tip a small hook which is to uh, remove the um, feathers uh, of the uh, small bees they catch uh, the wings of the bees they catch then you have berry eaters of soft fruit eaters now in soft fruit eaters they have a broad conical bill and this is where these birds eat the berry as a whole they don't they don't uh, rip the uh, fruit apart they eat it as a whole for example pigeons doves they eat the fruit as a whole and there are other fruit eaters like hard fruit eaters like parrots parakeets what they do is you could have seen that they eating them eating a guava or any other big fruit what they do is they rip the fruit apart and that is why they have a very sharp bill with a uh, with very similar to raptor but very small uh, size then you have the drummers the hard conical beak this is used to chip the substrate and also probe inside for prey so woodpeckers and barbets have this kind of beaks so if you see with beaks itself you can easily if i if you have a bird tomorrow in front of you by looking at the shape of the beak itself you can conclude whether it is a seed eater it is a worm eater it is a meat eater it is a fruit eater or it's a drummer basis this itself you have actually you know you have you have shortlisted from 1300 uh, odd birds in india or 9000 birds in the world you would have shortlisted easily up to 30% down you would have come down to 30% down very easily with just the uh, looking at the beak beak is one of the most important identification points always you have the impalers like kingfishers and very interesting is the waders because in waders you will see long thin beaks of various sh shapes and sizes now waders is a perfect example of harmony amongst uh, species you will see this the and uh, you will see the waders all wading in the same place and eating uh, uh, which is very rare for uh, for birds to you know uh, be gregarious when they are competing for the same area but uh, waders do that because of the shape of their bills so a curlew will eat from let's say 2 feet down uh, the earth then the uh, wimbrel will eat slightly up let's say 1 feet down from the earth and then your godwits will eat let's say half a feet down from the earth and then you have the turnstones etc eating on the surface of the earth so in the same area they are eating from different levels and not competing with each other for food and that is why they are able to do that and as soon as you see them doing that with the habit of prodding into the sand you know that they are waders so bill is a very very important id point in waders and within waders for example in sandpiper there are birds there are only one sandpiper which has a upturned bill called as a curlew sandpiper so as soon as you see an upturned bill you know it's a curlew sandpiper you have uh, only there are special shapes of the bills for example as soon as you see this bill you know immediately that this is a what is this so this is a bill with a cask so this is a bill with a cask to amplify the sound so you know uh, only few only only a particular species of birds has this and you you will not confuse this bird definitely for a eagle or for any other bird similarly a skimmer if you see a skimmer it has the longer uh, lower mandible and a smaller upper mandible so no other bird has this kind of uh, bill so as soon as you see this bill you have immediately identified the genus as a skimmer then there are birds like the uh, open bill asian open bill which will use the uh, bill to open uh, the hard shell to so break the hard shell it is like your uh, what you used to break the uh, bark or the uh, palm fruit na nut shells so for that you use that so like that they use their bill 
and like i was saying upturned bills there are only three or four birds with upturned bill this is a bite of a sit so you have an officer you have a curly sand pepper you have a godwit uh, there are three birds which i can remember of having upturned bill so these are special bills so a bill if you look at the bill itself it will give you an idea of what kind of bird are we looking at or what kind of genus are we speaking to so a seed eater versus a meat eater versus a, a fruit eater versus a uh, let's say worm eater now within worm eaters i said there are uh, there is um, there is um, uh, pipet uh, there is uh, uh, vtr there is uh, uh, tets there is uh, uh, there are chats so how do you then identify now this is completely my experience which i am sharing with you here i don't have any data to substantiate this but this is how i look at uh, the conical bills now, all these birds have conical bills so what do i do is that if the size of the bill is large and if the uh, it is not as thick it is very very conical it is thin bill then i would know that it's a vtr whereas uh, if the size of the bill is small and the thickness is there then i would say it's a tit the fly catcher perhaps has uh, 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 the most uh, thick of all the worm eaters bills so uh, th this is something which i have uh, understood basis my experience in the field but if you also look at various of these birds uh, bills you will understand that you know uh this is somewhere gelling with uh, what uh, i am saying so uh this is basically an idea to give uh, this is an idea which will tell you that uh, even in conical beaks or or worm eaters there is a difference in structure so it is very simple to understand that first we have understood the size of the bird then we have understood the habitat and now we are talking about what shape of the bill is thereby we are saying that it is a worm eater in worm eaters we have about five or six birds basis the worm eater we are saying okay basis the size and the thickness i think it is a wobbler so that thereby itself you can identify a genus the next step is perhaps the face which is a more conclusive way of uh, identifying uh, what genus it might belong to now bill will tell you whether it is a seed eater or a worm eater so now once you have identified it is a seed eater or worm eater that itself has reduced your percentage population or universe from let's say 1300 birds in india down to about 200 birds or 100 birds because your each of these birds have their own specific diets so that itself the bill itself will shortlist your uh, will give you a a smaller short list of birds to look at now you are looking at the face now face of the bird is perhaps the most uh, important um, after bill is the most important uh, part which will give you more ideas on what genus the bird can belong to and it is very very simple people will confuse you with lot of technical name uh, names i will make it as simple as possible the head is also called as a crown this is where we all wear a crown so it is crown so this is called as a crown the white part is called as a crown there are times that a bird will have a stripe just next to the crown now that is called as a lateral crown stripe it is basically a crown stripe so all birds will have a uh, i mean uh, the birds if you have they have a stripe on the near the crown it is called a crown stripe now the gap between the crown stripe and the eye this white part is the eyebrow of the bird or also called as supercilium so the nothing uh, supercilium is not uh, very uh, nothing to be afraid of it is just the eyebrow of the bird so supercilium is the eyebrow then you have the eye of the bird the black part is the iris and it also differs in colors then across around the iris some birds will have a small ring especially the small birds will have a small ring it is called as a eye ring of the bird some will confuse you saying that orbital ring or ocular ring it is basically eye ring so whatever is the um, ring around the eye is called eye ring then you have a stripe which runs around across the eye which is called the eye stripe some will call eye band so eye stripe the eye stripe between the 
beak and the eye is also called as lower uh, they are called the roll lower or lateral stripes and usually the eye stripe is the stripe behind the eye sometimes they uh, use the same name for this but sometimes this is specifically called as lores then comes the mustache mustache is what mustache is at the cheek like we have a mustache birds have a mustache so it is called the mustachial stripe they have a small stripe in their uh, in their throat like our dadi so malar stripe is nothing but a beard so malar stripe is a beard mustachial stripe is a mustache and the gap between the mustache and the malar stripe is called a sub mustachial stripe so these are the only parts of the face you need to remember eye stripe is easy crown is easy then you have a eyebrow supercilium the ring around the eye is eye ring then the gap between the eye and the beak is called lore then you have a mustache like us they have a beard which is malar and the gap between them is sub mustache now this will help you identify many birds many many birds especially the colorful ones and the small ones now for example this is the lore so this is itself is called black lore tit so you see the lore here the lore is black so it's called black lore tit the whole black this part is the uh, eye band or the eye stripe and this is the lateral stripe or lore so it's a black colored one so black lore tit now this is the ear covert so this is the part uh, which covers the ears each all birds have ears ears are small holes uh, in their body they don't have uh, like our uh, ears uh, the protruding part but they have a very very small hole which is covered by a patch of feathers which is called as ear covert now these these are important because this will help you identify birds uh, the smaller ones especially so where are they important for example supercilium is important in warblers waders tits fly catchers and pipits crown is important in night jars larks pilascopus warblers facial stripes are important in woodpeckers and night jars eyes and lores and ear coverts are important in warblers and pipits if you see with these features you can easily identify which genus that bird belongs to for example now i have three conical a uh, big birds here now how do i identify them very simple one is by going by the conical uh, shape of their beak which i was telling you for example i told you the vtr has the longest beak with the thinnest beak also a uh, warbler has a uh, uh, thin beak but medium thickness i mean sorry medium size and fly catchers have the most rounded beak of all so th this is one way of identifying the other way of identifying is you see the warbler has a supercilium very clearly it has a yellow color eyebrow it has a black eye ring you can see that then you see the uh, vtr you can see a very clear brown patch near the ear this is called the ear covert it has a slight white supercilium if you look at the fly catcher it doesn't have a supercilium very clear but it has a very clear crown which is which has uh, spottings on it so this is how you can identify a genus basis the face also these are important parts of the face which will help you identify between the warbler or the vtr as a fly catcher once you have identified that they are they are worm eating birds so you have identified worm eating birds and you have gone uh, into that sub group and then in that sub group you have vtr warbler fly catcher based on the facial features you can further identify which particular genus they belong to now for example this is a uh, easiest way to uh, identify golden back uh, woodpeckers now these are special woodpeckers and there are five woodpeckers in india which belong to golden back uh, or flame back family now you look at this the mustache this is the mustachial stripe this is the uh, the lower uh, black one is the uh, malar stripe and you have a clear white oval center which is the sub mustachial stripe and you have a very broad eye stripe now in common goldback in common goldback you have only one single stripe here you have two stripes here you have only one stripe and in in uh, himalayan goldback you have 
two stripes, but it is a buff color in between. So, in uh, lesser gold back, the uh, stripes are uh, are all you know they are not black completely. They have white feathers in it. So the facial features itself. For example, you get a picture of a bird where you don't get the other parts of the bird, but you have got only the face. It is still possible to identify which particular bird it is. Face is the face itself because the face itself has a lot of features which you can look at. So we have uh, identified now, as of now, what we have done is we have first looked at the size of the bird and said it's a small bird, it's a big bird. There we have identified the uh, order. Then we have come down and looked at its habitat and we have identified the family. Then we have come down and looked at the beak size, the beak shape, the, then identified what kind of bird it is. A uh, seed eater versus worm eater versus a uh, meat eater. Then we have looked at its face and identified the kind of genus it can belong to. Now comes the species. This perhaps is something which will take a long, long practice, a lot of practice and long, long time to understand. But I will still uh, share the features which are important in this to identify the bird species. Now, before we get into species. This is perhaps really more interesting to you because uh, I, I believe that most of you are interested in raptors. So this is a, 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 this is a very simple structure which a lot of people for their own uh, benefit have complicated into uh, various names. So what is a raptor? First, let me show you this. This is the human hand. This is a ba uh, bird's hand. Now, if you see, there is no difference between a bird's wing versus a human hand in terms of structure. So, the wings which have uh, the, the uh, fingers, these are called as primaries. So, the fingers are called primaries, which is your basic fingers of your hand. Then, your uh, primaries are followed by secondary. Secondaries is this part. Secondaries of a bird are this part, which is basically your uh, uh, your uh, uh, connector, connection towards the shoulder. Then tertiaries are what connects the secondaries to the shoulder or the body. So this is how a bird has its wings. Now, in this, if you see, there are only three things to, in fact, two things to remember. Tertiaries are very hard, rarely spoken about. Two things to remember. One is primary. One is secondary. This is the flight feathers of the wing. And then you have the tail feathers, which are called retrices. So with, with the tail feathers and the uh, wing feathers, these are the flight feathers. They are called the flight feathers of a bird. So only three things to remember. Primaries, secondaries, and tail feathers. Tertiaries are hardly spoken about. Now, to cover these, uh, these feathers, the birds have some smaller feathers to protect them. And that is very simple. They are called as the coverts. Now, there are, uh, there are six type of coverts. But in the six type of coverts, they are basically only three types, which are further divided. Uh, each covert is divided two times. So basically, you have a greater covert, you have a median covert, and you have a lesser covert. So, now, what is a greater cover? Greater cover is the lowermost cover of the bird, which covers the secondaries. And when it covers the primaries, it is called as the primary greater cover. That is all. It is the greater cover. And above the greater cover, there is a median cover. And above the median cover is the smaller, lesser cover. So these are very, very, very simple terms. There are three covers and there are three. Uh, feathers. That is all you have to remember. There are primary, there is secondary, there is tail feather, there is greater cover, there is lesser cover, and there is, sorry, there is greater cover, there is median cover, and lesser cover. That's all. There are only six feathers on the bird's wing that you have to remember. Rest of it is of no use to us. So here, this is how usually a sitting or a perched bird will look like. So here, if you see, you see this part, which is the folded wing. This is the primary feather. So the primary feather is always pointing towards the tail of the bird. So this is the primary feather. 
and the feather on the back of the bird is the secondary feather so whenever a bird is sitting the primary feather will point towards the tail the secondary feather will be on the back of the wing then you have first the greater covered then you have the median covered then you have the lesser covered lesser covered is on the shoulder of the bird also called as scapula but we just will call it as lesser covered then you have the median covered in the middle and the greater so these five plus the tail feather six are all the feathers you need to know there will be lot of people who will confuse you with you know a uh, uh, upper covered lower covered lesser covered don't get confused there are only five to six feathers which you need to know on the birds and also i'll take an opportunity here to show you that this is the crown the yellow is the crown stripe the brown the black is the lateral crown stripe this yellow is the eyebrow or the supercilium this black is the lower this black is eye stripe this white half white you see here is the eye ring so here you can see a wobbler with all all the features which we discussed till now now also sometimes uh, they will call uh, the upper part as mantle and the shoulder as scapula now uh, i usually whenever i mark my birds i put as upper parts and uh, shoulders but if if somebody has put an as mantle or scapula it basically means upper part and the shoulder it's nothing uh, very technical it is upper part and the shoulder now this is perhaps uh, the under wing now what we saw here was the uh, over wing and now uh, the under wing the under wing of the bird is very similar to the over wing they have primaries they have secondaries and then you have the uh, greater covers you have the lesser cover medium cover then you have lesser cover the same structure follows above wing as well as lower wing why i am showing you this in detail uh, and explaining this in such detail is that because most of you are interested in raptors and the identification of raptors uh, is by its face its toes and its uh, wings so that is why i am spending some time here uh that uh, you know you need to understand the structure of a wing it is it is very very easy to understand you have primary you have secondary and you have the covers also since we are talking about raptors we need to understand that the fingers will the fingers have something called a notch notch nothing but where the fingers meet the two fingers meet here it's called notch and why notch is important is because the uh, notch the depth of the notch will help you identify between a uh, eagle versus a buzzard versus a uh, falcon while they are flying so the more deeper the fingers are it is eagle the less deeper it is buzzard and least deep is a falcon so i'll show you that also uh, as we go by but uh, notch is something which is the depth of the or where the two fingers meet also Uh, uh this is in 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 uh, actual uh, bird which i shot now here it is very clear if you see the primaries are the fingers the secondaries are this part which is basically between the fingers and the body tarsals are the last two uh, or three feathers and the dark brown part is the greater underwing cover the light brown part is the median cover and this part which is on the edge of the wing is a lesser cover so this is as simple as that there is nothing technical on uh, to understand much there are only five feathers or six feathers to understand for a bird the tail covers uh, the 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 figure the feathers which cover the cover uh, tail are also called tail covers and uh, there are upper tail covers uh, and the lower tail covers so this is a lower tail covers which cover from tail from bottom and this is the covers which cover the tail from top which are called upper tail covers these are important in sand grouses uh, and partridges and birds like that where they, the colors will change uh, for the uh, upper tail covers rump is nothing but the uh, the uh, the uh, bum upper part of the bum of the bird and vent is the lower part of the bum of the bird so rump is also important and vent is also important because the colors of the rump and the vent also help you identify various uh, species now 
the other important thing to identify in identify bird is the wing tip to tail ratio now why is this important because in harriers and waders uh, this helps you identify very very similar looking birds so for example here the common sandpiper identification if you look at the tail is much longer than the folded wings now this is very very important to identify that you know when the when the bird goes into non breeding plumage it is very difficult to identify the bird in non breeding plumage now that is where uh, this kind of tips will help where your the tail is much longer than the folded wings and you will be able to identify it easily now for example in terms of a pallid harrier here as i said the folded uh, wings uh, primaries will always point towards the uh, tail so this is the black is the primary and this this uh, gray is the secondary the black is the primary now if you look at the folded wings they are far far sh shorter than the tail the tail is the gray here the gray one so the folded wings fall short of tail tips so they are pallid harrier for a montagu harrier they they both will be of the same length so this is how you identify between different species of birds now marsh sandpiper the easiest way to identify marsh sandpiper is when they are flying most of the waders i have uh, i have experienced uh, uh, identification is that it's easy to identify when they are flying so once you get good shots of the waders and you are confused about uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, identif identification it is better to make them fly and take a shot the flight shots will definitely give you better identification tips than uh, the portraits so for a marsh sandpiper the legs will jut far away from their wings so it's a very very easy identification also the rump uh, and the back is very very white for a marsh sandpiper so this kind of uh, ids will help you identify very easily what the bird is tail the long tails will help you identify easy easy identification of birds also there are birds which are tailless for example wren warblers they have no tails so that also is with the long tail as well as the short tail will help you identify what kind of species it can belong to there are habits on birds which are very very important to observe uh, obviously when you are presented a photograph you will not be able to observe the habits but if you are in the field uh, if you observe the habits a wagtail will always bob its tail the red start will always bob its tail now that itself will help you identify uh, what kind of uh, bird this particular is because for example if i follow whatever we have talked about till now if i say that you know this is a small bird so it is not a raptor it has to be a passerine form then i look at the habitat it is found near the water uh, and uh, and grassland then i look at the beak it's a worm eater then i say it's a conical beak it's a worm eater i look at its face it doesn't have many of the features what i talked about so then i say that it is not a wobbler it is not a, a pipit it is not a fly catcher so i keep discounting and then i come and look at the habit where the tail is wobbling then immediately i can identify that this is a wag tail so from the first step to the last step it takes me as of now it might take me for this white back tail it might take me only about a second but you know the process remains the same that look at the features and then identify the bird there are tail habits of birds with in the, in the stands for example a shama will will every 2 or 3 seconds you know 2 or 3 minutes it will pick up its tail and give you this kind of pose or a red star or a um, uh, your uh, uh, this thing will uh, uh, red star will also give you this kind of a pose the reason why they do it is that because that is how they can balance their body and this is the way they have a typical up tail up stance pose uh similarly uh, uh, the uh, pose of uh, uh, scrub robin where it, it will spread its uh, wings and then walk around in a stutter or even the stolics are bushat which will do a puff and uh, roll kind of a habit so these habits will will easily identify will help you identify what kind of species they are also some uh, since you guys are all interested in raptors some uh, some uh, information on the legs of the bird like i was saying the most common birds uh, to be found uh, amongst all the bird species is called as passerines or passeriforms 
now they have four legs i mean sorry four toes and uh, the four toes are split like three toes in front and one toe in the back this is because this helps them easily uh, perch on uh, small perches so this is the most common shape of a bird's uh, leg now there are don't go into uh, the uh, zygorectile and uh, uh, anisorectile and all that that is basically uh, uh, the technical term but what we need to understand is three toes in front one toe in back here two toes in front two toes in the back why two toes in front two toes in the back is because it will help the birds climb uh, or hold on to vertical surfaces for example a woodpecker a barbet you know these birds will always stand vertical on a, a, on a tree uh so they they help uh, the birds perch better on a vertical surface so that is one then there are birds which will come sometimes fool you also this is an extra information i'm giving you uh which is that they some birds have this ability where they have two toes in front and two toes in back and they can immediately if and when necessary they will immediately move one toe from the back and push it in front and that kind of uh, adaptation they have for example owls and ospreys they are they are they are uh, very very capable of doing this where they will push one toe from the back and bring it in front uh, osprey when it is hunting it will do that so for example here this is a uh, night heron and if you see this these are shots uh, sh uh, shot at the same time uh, uh, after one after the other here two toes in the front are there and once it was going to take off it needed more power to push from the perch it shifted one toe from the back and brought it in front so that kind of ability is also with the birds with the legs and uh, there are birds which can bring all four toes also in front for example the tree creepers they can do all four toes in front which will help them get a better grip on a vertical surface there are birds which have uh, webbed toes now uh, when we are talking about webbed toes it can be completely it can be uh, all the three toes can be webbed and the fourth toe can be uh, left uh, uh, without webs this is basically for birds which do not have uh, to dive very deep but there are birds which will have to dive uh, very deep Uh, into water which will have all four toes webbed for example only the front facing toes have webs in dabbling ducks and geese like i said dabbling ducks don't go completely into water they just uh, dabble on the surface of the water so they don't have to dive deep they don't have completely webbed legs only partially webbed legs similarly you have these stalks and ibises which don't have complete webs but only the uh only the base of the toes are webbed this helps them walk into the water uh, maintain better balance while walking into the water whereas a diving duck a cormorant or a pelican which completely submerge into the water can go dive into the water will have complete all four toes um, uh, they will have this uh, kind of a uh, uh, web and when they are walking on land they are very very they find it very very difficult that is why when ducks walk on land they have a particular way of walking uh, because they don't have that kind of a grip on land they keep slipping so that is called waddle so uh, uh, that is because of their uh, leg shape now there are something called a spur now why is spur important the fifth toe uh, like humans all the mammals the birds also had a fifth toe but as they didn't use it the nature took it away from them but for the birds which spend most of its time on land like the fowls and the partridge and uh, um, pheasants uh, nature has given it uh, back to them on the leg called a spur now spur is used by these birds in fights for territory fights for mate and also during mating process so the tarsal spur is very important id basically all the males will have tarsal spur the females will lack tarsal spur there are some birds which will, uh, in which the female will also have tarsal spur but they will be smaller than the male so males are the ones 
with longer and bigger tarsal spurs and that is a big uh, help in iding uh, male versus female in pheasants now why is leg important now if you look at this a common goldback will always have three toes in front and a greater goldback will have two toes in front and two toes in back so if you have a id of you have a picture of a bird and uh, the face perhaps is not very clear or you know you are not able to make the id out of the face but if you have a leg shot very clear then it is still possible to identify which particular bird it is pipits for example richards pipits one of the most talked about id for richard pipit pipit is its hind claws now uh, i i attended a very uh, very interesting lecture by one of the leading experts on pipits in india and um, his uh, uh, his uh, explanation was that he doesn't go by this uh, feature two reasons because if i put a uh, richard's pipit uh, and i put a, a paddy field pipit body body to claw ratio this ratio of body to claw is same for richard as well as paddy field so it is very difficult to say it's a richard or a paddy field and uh, that is why a richard or a paddy field uh, hind claw is not a great uh, uh, id feature for richard is his view but most of the people all uh, for richard people's id they will always look at the hind claw and look at the size of the hind claw it is huge similarly the color of the legs will also help you identify between two birds for example a stint a little stint will have a black leg a deming stint will have a yellow leg so that itself is a very very clear id between the two stints that you know in especially in the non breeding uh, uh, plumage it is very difficult to identify a wader but the color of the leg is a throw away like red shag versus green shag and black uh, black uh, little stint versus a deming stint then there are special features like wattles now as soon as you see this you can identify that this is a lapping so you have a uh, uh, wattles for yellow wattle lapping you have a red wattle lapping which has a red wattle or a knob bill duck which will have this kind of a knob on its uh, nose so these are special features which will help you id the birds very 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 easily now coming to raptors which is perhaps of more interest to all of you uh you might have seen that most of the bird guides will look up in the sky and immediately say oh this is a eagle flying this is a buzzard flying this is a falcon flying and they won't even tell you what eagle it is or buzzard it is so how do they do that it is basically looking at the wing structure now if you look at a eagle's wing structure this part which you see like the small hill here is called the wrist of the uh, eagle the wrist of the eagle uh, if you see this 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 place of the uh, uh, eagle this is called as the leading edge and this is called as the trailing edge the trailing edge of the eagle is not that rounded it is slightly rounded but not that rounded and the wrist part is almost flat whereas you have a deeper wrist part for a buzzard and the wings are all rounded for a buzzard also look at the fingers this is the notch this is what i was telling you eagles have a deeper notch and usually eagles have 6 to 7 uh, fingers a buzzard usually has 5 to 6 fingers usually 5 fingers and it has a very rounded appearance and the tail to body is bigger than the eagle the neck of a eagle is uh, is more uh, extended whereas a buzzard has a rounded neck if you look at the falcon it is very clear the the uh, uh, the leading edge is very clear different from the buzzard as well as the eagle the leading edge is rounded and the trailing edge falls down towards the body and very rarely you see fingers in the view there are fingers in the falcon but when they are flying on top very rarely you see the fingers in the falcon so like that if you look at this picture this will tell you basically how different each of the raptor is when it is flying so a uh, eagle versus uh, butio is basically buzzard uh, or hawk uh, um, we in india we call it buzzard in west part of the world it's called as hawk uh, your kite kite has a long tail uh, usually kite has a fork tail but sometimes the kites also uh, can disguise the fork so kite has a long tail a harrier as small fingers 
and you look at the acceptors acceptors have look at this part of the wing this is clearly rounded going into the body whereas here it is much more flatter and the buteo has a round overall round shape so the shape of the flight itself will tell you which particular uh, uh, eagle or a, a raptor it is also this will be able this will help you to identify uh, the uh, particular raptor uh, if it's a juvenile because each of the juvenile raptors has its own uh, underwing pattern that uh, i will suggest you to go into my website uh, detail i'll give you if you go there there is a identification file and uh, i can uh, you can go through the identification file and that will help you identify each of the raptor in detail so as we talked about now for example how do we identify a bird now if we take aberrant bush warbler how do i identify aberrant bush warbler now the first thing i do is i look at the size i say it's a small bird the habitat i know it's i shot it in forest or bush dweller and this is the bill shape and the plumage the face the eyebrows etc i say it's a warbler then i use the special id points as face wings tail to identify it as an aberrant bush warbler now these are this is how i identify it as an aberrant bush warbler the crown is plain it has a plain yellow supercilium the dark eye stripe brown ear coverts and the whole body then is apparent that uh, i use it to identify the aberrant bush warbler now this is a very very easy method to follow to identify a particular bird now i am giving you my cheat sheet i am sharing you to my cheat sheet this is what i look for whenever i get a bird what are the parts of the bird i look at which will help me identify a bird easily for example night jar if i get a night jar i will look at the coverts the nuchal collar nuchal collar is nothing but the neck part uh, the crown and the face if i get a warbler i look at the face the covert the under parts and the tail so like that i have given you all my cheat sheet which will help me helps me identify the uh, birds uh, per se also i am giving you a cheat sheet for uh, raptors uh, uh, i'll mail this presentation to uh, saju sir so that he can abuse so he can uh, 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 share it with you all so the cheat sheet for raptors is here uh, where uh, how to identify a bodily versus a booted versus uh, all these eagles um, and uh, this will help you uh, now for example like i was saying you know each one has his own way of uh, identifying a bird now for me indian spotted eagle i think the head of the indian spotted eagle is like a pigeon so i put it pigeon shape now you know not very people I, i will not be able to explain to you why it is pigeon shape i i think it's a pigeon shape that's why i wrote according to me so if you find a different looking head on a eagle great chances that it is a indian spotted eagle uh, but also there are uh, uh, there are good uh, id points on uh, akila eagles for example uh, what you need to look at eagles is also the nostrils so in a tawny eagle the two things which we usually look in a portrait if you get a good portrait of a uh, eagle is the uh, the gape length and the nostril so on a tawny eagle the nostril is elliptical and on a steppe eagle also the nostril is elliptical the steppe eagle has a yellow gape which is extending beyond the center of the eye whereas a tawny eagle just it just ends at the center of the eye similarly greater spotted eagle also ends at the center of the eye whereas uh, for a indian spotted eagle the nostril is rounded and it goes slightly beyond the uh, center of the eye now you look at the shape of the head now for me this shape of the head is not round or uh, not like any other these three eagles for me it looks slightly smaller and it looks like a pigeon so that's why i put it as a pigeon shape now uh, also what i would like to show is um, uh, if i can share that screen uh with you just a second uh okay uh just a second sir uh open recent akila eagles okay share screen share screen you share akila eagle yeah share 
can you see the uh, eagles uh, this thing sir yes sir if, yeah, yeah okay now for example uh, how do i identify a steppe eagle now uh, these are uh, this is how i identify a steppe eagle by its black sir light brown head and all that so this is a this is a presentation which i have made uh, for all the birds about uh, i have made for about uh, uh, close to about uh, 800 species i have made till now uh, and this is available uh, in my website if you go for eagles you will have to go to ogaclicks.com eagles and you will get the identification file like this there if you go into the identification file it will tell you how to identify an eagle and all the akila eagles for example uh, there is a fish eagle there is a hawk eagle like that there are various files so for akila eagle all the akila eagles found in india uh, i have the identification for example this is the uh, height comparison and how does a bonnie's eagle look like how does the adult look a juvenile look like how does the adult look like then uh, what are the features of the face which you need to look at for a bonnie's eagle what are the flight pattern this is what i was saying so if you look at the under under wing flight pattern of juvenile it is very different from an adult so looking at it there are six fingers for a bonnie's eagle and the under parts are brown for a juvenile whereas for an adult it is white so like that you will be able to find out and then the shot of the same bird from the top so a white patch on the back is a giveaway for bonnie's eagle so important id points are also marked so a white patch on the back will is definitely body eagle so like that for a booted eagle and uh, uh, for various eagles eastern imperial eagle or akila eagles are here like that there will be fish eagle there will be uh, uh, there will be buzzards there will be warblers pipits so about 85 species uh, uh, genus sorry uh, 85 genus i have already made and uh, put it there uh now uh, if you guys ever have time you can go down and you can just download it uh, uh from my uh, website uh, it is free to download and that will help you in uh, uh, in identifying birds uh, uh whenever you uh, are in doubt so that should help you in identification of birds now like i was saying the whole idea of this presentation is to get you up to the genus level not into the species level because species level uh let me be very honest with you uh, species level if somebody tells me especially in the smaller birds or even in tawny eagle or steppe buzzard or the as you call a common buzzard if somebody tells me that this is it i take it to the pinch of salt because it is very 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 difficult unless you have a call unless you see the habit unless so with a with a picture it is very difficult to say so the idea was to help you identify that it is an eagle it is an akila eagle it is a wobbler it is a pipit only till that level now what pipit what akila what uh, wobbler is something which will come only through habit a simple example i will give you this is a rose finch comparison of female rose finches i had sent it to many experts in india none of them could tell me which rose finch is what it is impossible to say you look at them they are all very very similar it is very very difficult to say this is that rose finch i could identify only one i could identify pink browed rose finch that's all some of them marked some points and gave it to me but none of them could say which rose finch is what so it is definitely difficult to get into species level if you get into genus there everybody said this is a rose finch and that is what is important you have to identify this as a rose finch and after that it is it is through practice it is through uh, other uh, things like habits calls etc that you will arrive at what kind of uh, species it is so if you arrive at genus level that is a great job done and uh, this is what i wanted to share with you also the fact that you will get lot of um, uh bird id uh, uh features in my uh website if you are in doubt you could go there and you can just download these files uh and you could uh, uh, go through them they are very very uh, simple they are very very easy all the files are like this where you will have the bird and you will have the parts marked and uh, with the details of all the parts so this is what i wanted to share with you in terms of how to identify a bird process 
and I'm open to questions. Okay. So, anybody having any questions? Hello, sir. Paul here. How are you? Hi, Paul. Uh, sir, I just have a question it's regarding uh, uh, warblers again. Okay. Uh, speaking about reed warbler and marsh warbler, are they the mm. same or are they different? Oh, uh, reed warbler and marsh warbler uh, are not the same. Uh, just a second, I'll tell you the difference between these two in terms of uh, their. Uh, uh, just a second, control F warblers. Now, uh, reed warblers are all acrocephalus warblers. Uh, acrocephalus basically means they have long legs, gray color warblers. And uh, then you have uh, the uh, marsh warbler is one part of, uh, of uh, the, uh, if I'm not wrong, it should be of the uh, oh, marsh babbler will be there. Marsh warbler is not there in India. There's a marsh babbler in India. Okay. Okay. So, so why I ask because uh, I I got a I got a warbler uh, and okay. after doing whatever you know I'm not a very uh, big expert. So I generally use Google Lens to get the basic identification and then I drill down to other images and find the most similar image to identify the bird. Gee. So. Uh, Doing that, uh, I I had an image of a wobbler that I thought is a reed wobbler, but then the appearance was so similar to marsh wobbler that you know it did it it created a lot of confusion in me. Like, okay. what exactly is it? Because they look very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their uh, the markings, the spectacles, as you said, the mustache and. Uh, yeah. the eye retina structure it's pretty identical and they're all pretty brownish there are no distinct features that can uh, yeah. distinguish them from each other so that's why i just asked you that you wait to understand this process. no no, no. Uh, definitely see marsh okay now i because india doesn't have marsh wobbler so i i didn't do much on that but marsh wobbler and reed wobbler apparently belong to the same family across the plus so okay. uh, it will be very confusing uh, because uh, uh, both of them uh, belong to the same family. So right. definitely uh, they will be very, very confusing. But yeah. I think today's session, uh, the beak structure that you spoke about, I think oh. the reed warblers have a little bit longer beak, yes. I guess. I yeah, think yeah. So. Could be, could be. I See, the, the, get back to the image. No, no, no. You, you, uh, you're right. Because what will happen is that as you look at more and more, uh, uh, more and more, uh, birds you see, yeah. uh, the more and more uh, images will uh, stay in your mind. I read a book by a, a guy called Malcolm uh, Gladwin, I think, called, Gladwin, uh, yeah, a book called Blink. So he explains there that there are things in our brain which we cannot explain. But once we see this, we say that immediately there is a response to that particular, this picture is original, this picture is a duplicate, or this uh, is a particular thing. Now, that is uh, from what he calls the thin slices in, uh, stored in our brain. So the best way I have, uh, I have come across my habit is to look, look at as many images as possible of, uh, of uh, bird species. Uh, when I say wobblers, I will go into bird ID, bird ID or some other uh, group or some other uh, site and look at as many birds as possible. Those stay in my mind as... Uh, as the you know as the slices and whenever i see a bird it immediately picks it up from there like yes. you are saying exactly beak might be the thickness of the beak might be a great uh, for example Observe, behind you observation I can, to, yeah to i can see a blue throat right behind you is a blue throat right yeah exactly ah, yes. so now uh, this blue throat again um, uh, there are two two blue throats in three blue throats in india the uh, the uh, what the blue throat which you have behind has a yellow or slightly orangish uh, middle uh, part between the two blue uh, throats. Yes. Part. Yes. In India, you have one which has red uh, and no uh, blue down, and then you have white. Uh, it's called white okay. throat. So even I moment, found another variation in Europe that huh. where there is no red or amber part, it is full blue. Exactly. Blue. So yeah. full blue. Yeah. Exactly. Full blue. So yeah. So so the, those things stay in your mind. So as soon as I see you. And your backdrop, the, the bird I hear, see it, I can immediately say it's a small bird. 
a tiny conical beak you know all those process follow but they are happening in milliseconds and i say it's a flu through correct and sir i i just add on to one more question Anji. Anji. uh now this is about the difference between uh, i already understood what you spoke about buzzards and eagles and uh, other other raptors now, speaking about kestrels and hawks hmm. now if buzzards also belong to the species or the genome of hawks, hawks. Uh, then they are pretty large sized yeah uh, and wherein falcons and kestrels are small sized yeah yeah now uh when you, if we have to really distinguish between falcons and kestrels what hmm. would you advise see uh, falcon and kestrel both belong to falco uh, family uh, both of them are uh, f- falcons uh, bil- belong to the same family now kestrel is uh, is slightly smaller than falcon so unless you uh, you shoot them um uh, uh if you are looking at them you're asking me if you are asking me from the point of flying on top of you then it is slightly difficult but if you have a picture of them it is very easy to differentiate between a falcon and a kestrel because all most of the falcons will have a tear drop a all black right. will have a tear drop a kestrel so that will, have, will be the anterior yeah, part of the eye yeah okay. yeah yeah this this part okay. because uh, and- this most of the they are fast they are the uh, fastest creatures right the peregrine yes, and the yes. uh, amur and all Even that so they have a the cheetah also i guess exactly exactly <laughs> same reason because yeah, yes, the reason yes. is that the light should not get into the air and blind them so this Correct. reflects the uh, light so Correct. the uh, falcons will have that and a kestrel will not have so that is one okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. easy feature That's to when you have a, a portrait of a kestrel or falcon when they are flying up the shapes are very similar correct correct and yeah, i think I they both can hover also i mean kestrel yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely hover kestrel can, kestrel can do for a longer time falcons yeah. don't do that falcons dive so that is a ha- habit different they had they yes. dive and yes. falcons eat a bigger prey so falcons will eat uh, prey uh, of small birds and pigeons and things like that kestrels okay. are mostly towards uh, you know uh, the locust and uh, bigger uh, or smaller rodents and things like that Modern. so uh, right. falcons hunt in air kestrels hunt on ground so these are small uh, differences okay. but not right. necessarily always correct if a yeah. falcon you, doesn't find thank anything you, it can even pick up a rodent yes sir true yes yeah. thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir yes sir chandrakant sir is having a question yeah yes sir uh, hello sir two questions i have yes sir hi uh, second class today uh, again more interesting thank you sir i have two questions yes sir uh one is of course uh, i was given to understand that uh, the gender of the bird is Haan, most often defined from the lars or lors or whatever you call it. okay and and second thing about uh, the ravens okay uh now there are uh, i know there are different types of ravens yes sir the raven which i find here a yes, much sir. larger compared to the one in india and in correct anywhere else correct, correct. Uh, air in this ravens of course in crows you have some portion of crown and lars and yeah. uh, submustachial and uh, yeah. mustachial and all these things but in raven uh, there is no such thing it's completely same color black. so completely black identify yeah yeah completely black I, I, and I'll, what category do you put uh, uh, ravens under in ravens what category do i put okay so uh, f- the first question i'll answer sir is that uh, the uh, female versus uh, male now uh, in uh, indian birds i have done this i have not done it for the whole uh, for this thing but for indian birds out of 1335 indian birds uh, there are close to about 70% of the birds where you don't have a sexual dimorphism for example uh, which is visible to humans for example a eagle doesn't have a sexual dimorphism visible to humans sexual dimorphism in eagles is basically the size of the bird so a female eagle is bigger than the male eagle so unless they are sitting together it is not possible to identify a female versus a male uh, but the rest 40% uh are easily uh, uh, uh are easily identifiable basis color 
basis uh, um, basis the other features like for example in pheasants like i was saying they will have spurs a uh, male will have spurs female will not have spurs lores presence and absence of lores is more related to a species rather than as a point for sexual dimorphism there are certain birds like in warblers there might be uh, there might be some uh, amount of presence or absence of lores which would lead to a sexual dimorphism there but that is not a sure shot uh, uh, in all the birds so uh, first of all not all the birds have sexual dimorphism which humans can see birds see in different colors so they can identify who is a female who is a male but humans cannot see that and even in the birds which we can see sexual dimorphism there are other features like colors the female is usually drab they are very unattractive unlike a mammal and uh, birds the males are more colorful basically because of the camouflage reasons and safety reasons so a uh, female has very drab colors and female lacks uh, various uh, features like male like spurs and uh, uh, some some females uh, are smaller and very very drab color so that is the way we make a difference between female and male now coming to the second point on ravens ravens are big uh or if a crows belong to uh ravens uh, and they all belong to a, a, a family called corvids corvidae now uh the corvids uh, uh of bigger sizes like ravens and all i put them in fact all corvids i would put them in scavengers uh they are like vultures they will rarely hunt it's not that they will not hunt but they will look for free food so free food is available for them usually Uh, as a hunt uh, by other animals or uh, the uh, garbage cans so uh, ravens uh, will usually look for uh, free food so i would call them as scavengers now how do i identify ravens now the identification of ravens like you said is very difficult because most of them are similar color but the uh, the thickness of the beak as well as the bristles as they are called on the beak so if you look at two ravens you will see the length of hair there will be some hair on the beak of the raven on the raven's beak there will be hair the length of the hair on the beak of the raven itself will tell you what kind of raven it is for india we have three ravens and that is the way we identify the ravens in india basically by the length of the hair on the beak also the color of the eye some ravens in india have a slightly uh the darker to a light color on the eye and the eye ring so the face of the raven has the eye ring as well as the beak of the raven the thickness and the uh, bristles or uh, hair on the uh, beak itself will tell you the uh, difference between ravens this is what we find in india but if you have any specific raven which you are not able to identify i would uh, request you to send it to me and uh, let me attempt uh, to see what distinguishing features i can see on that thank you so much uh, just last week uh, last sunday when i was just stepping out of my flat yes sir i live on top floor okay. there were three big huge ravens you know, okay and okay they were making so much noise i was uh -huh. you know surprised to see them sitting here because usually you find ravens here in you know in the mountain okay. side and all these things okay in yeah. india we have uh, only three ravens we have a brown neck raven we have a punjab raven and a northern raven so uh, all these three uh, in fact northern raven and uh, punjab raven look very similar uh, but uh, it is the length of the hair on their uh, bill is uh, what helps us identify uh, the thank you thank you so much sir. thank you sir uh, any questions anybody I have a question from Mr. Arul regarding uh, the bill shapes you shared. I like to know the crow crow's bill, which has some uniqueness, I guess. Uh, okay, so he wants to know about the crow's bill. A uh, crow's bill is more similar to a meat eater's bill only. Uh, yeah, it is unique in the sense that uh, uh, the the lower uh, the uh, lower mandible is uh, flat and the upper mandible is cover uh, is is kind of. curved like uh, a seed eater but uh, the uh, issue with the crow is that it rarely hunts it's a scavenger like just i said so uh, uh, scavengers 
uh, don't have a specific type of a bill uh, because they eat whatever they get so uh, that is why uh, i didn't take crow into the presentation because crow would uh, would eat worms would eat fruit would eat everything so that is the reason why i didn't eat, take crows into okay any more questions uh... Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your you. knowledge. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you next time with another session. Yeah. yeah. I perhaps uh, I, people uh, this the Hyderabad the Deccan uh, birders have asked me to do uh, one thing specifically for raptors. Oh, okay. So yeah. since you guys are also interested in raptors, uh, once I do that for them, yeah, I'll please give share us. Yeah. Yeah. Please share us. Yeah. Please share us. Maybe we could do that. I yeah. also share this presentation and. Uh, please feel free to go into the website and download uh, all the files uh, they are all easily downloadable pdf files okay, and sure. uh, whenever you want you can download and uh, they are all free for uh, use thank you very much okay and uh, pray you guys you. stay okay. safe thank okay. you okay thank, thanks you bye okay bye bye